What's up guys, it's Tracker707 and today, I'll be doing a tutorial on Inside Gadget's new original DS Wireless RX Flexboard. I reached out to Inside Gadgets and they agreed to send this out to me for free, so a huge shout out to them for agreeing to continue to work with me. If you guys like this tutorial, make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below if this video has helped you out at all. Everything I use in the video will be linked in the description below and let's get started with the tutorial. The only things you're going to need for this mod is an original DS, a DS Wireless RX Flex board, one of Inside Gadget's transmitters, a screwdriver with a Y0 bit and a Phillips double zero bit, tweezers and Kapton tape, and optionally Flux. I didn't use any, but I would still recommend using it. If you're looking for a controller mod for the DS Lite, I'll have a tutorial for that coming out soon, and I'll throw the link for that in the description. Now let's get started. Unscrew the Phillips screw to the battery door and remove the battery. Next, unscrew the 7 Y-bit screws from around the back of the shell, then remove the back of the shell. Remove the large ribbon cable for the bottom screen by flipping up the black latch, then gently pull out the ribbon cable. Then, remove the two ribbon cables for the digitizer by pushing forward the locking mechanism and then gently pulling out the ribbon cable. Remove the large ribbon cable for the top screen by flipping up the black latch and then gently pull out the ribbon cable. Then, remove the wireless antenna. Now, we can unscrew the four Phillips screws holding the DS motherboard in place, and then take the DS motherboard out of the shell by lifting from the two cartridge slots. Start prepping the board for the flex cable by adding some fresh solder to the points shown on the screen. Now line up the DS Wireless RX Flex board with the solder points on the DS motherboard and use some Kapton tape to hold it in place. Line up the flex board with the correct test points and solder it down, making sure that the flex board is flush with the DS motherboard. Next, solder down the other side of the flex board so it's held down in place, again making sure that the flex board is flush with the motherboard. Once both sides of the flex board are soldered in place, you can remove the capped on tape and solder down all the rest of the points on the flex board. As you solder down the flex board, make sure that the flex board is as flat against the DS motherboard as possible.
Make sure that if any two points get bridged together, use something like a solder remover pump or a solder braid to unbridge them. The BT negative point may be difficult to solder down good, as it is a ground point, which means it will take a lot longer to warm up and get the solder flowing. After the DS flex board is soldered down flush against the DS motherboard, place the DS motherboard into the top half of the shell while making sure that the ribbon cables for the bottom screen and the digitizer go through their hole, and the wireless cable and the ribbon cable for the top screen are not trapped under the board. Screw down the DS motherboard into the top half of the shell using the four Phillips head screws. Next, insert the ribbon cables for the touchscreen into their slots. Make sure they're pushed in all the way and then slide the black locking mechanism shut. Insert the ribbon cable for the bottom screen and make sure that the black part of the connector lines up with the white line on the motherboard. Once it is, push the clip shut. Just like for the bottom screen, insert the ribbon cable into its connector and make sure that the black part lines up with the white line on the motherboard, then push the clip shut. Now reattach the Wi-Fi antenna. Close up the shell with the 7 tri-wing screws. I would recommend screwing these in a cross pattern to take some of the stress off of the plastic. Now put the battery in and screw down the battery door. Once finished, turn the system on to make sure it works. On the setup screen, do a quick test of all the buttons on the physical DS and also with the wireless controller. If everything seems to be working correctly, then we're done. I'd recommend doing more of an extensive test using a software that I'll have linked in the description, and I'll be showing that on screen right now. If any of the button inputs are not registering correctly, open the DS back up and double check that all of the points on the flex board are soldered down good, and none of the points are bridged. If you need any extra help or have any more questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below, and join mine and Inside Gadget's Discord servers for any help. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below if this video helped you out at all. Again, I just want to thank Inside Gadgets for sending this out to me. I can't explain how much I appreciate everything they've done for myself and for my channel. I hope you guys liked the video and I will see you in the next one.